A sustainability framework requires us to think about places and weaving together a whole variety of different values and interests and expertise in order to deliver something that will be a place for flourishing over the long term. About 30,000 people a year are coming to the City of Toronto, 100,000 people to the GTA. This has been accompanied by employment growth. This is the outcome of 40 years of planning and planning policy, driving the growth into the core, thinking very strategically about redevelopment in the core. It's resulting in a very desirable place to live. And we know that with our buildings and how we move, those two factors with respect to each of our individual environmental footprints are the majority of the impact that we have on the environment, 95%. Our air quality has gotten better as we've grown because we have been driving our growth to our main transit corridors. And in this instance, the opportunity is to use the transit as a way of facilitating a whole variety of different modes of movement. The lowest cost way to move people in a city is creating walkable communities. And then the most costly way to move people is by putting each person in their own car. 75% of the population in downtown Toronto either walks or cycles to work. Now you add in the transit users and you have very few people in that downtown core that are driving. The youth are moving into the downtown core and now we're starting to struggle with the problem of families and how you raise families in condos and in a very urban environment. 22% of the rush hour traffic in the GTA is parents driving their kids to school. Maybe what we need to do is be increasing the daycare spaces, providing spaces for artists in our schools as the school population, the number of school-aged children ebbs and flows. But instead, we treat those schools as an asset to be sold. The infrastructure that you see here, most of the time, all day long, it's unused. And also, there's really only one way to get around here. You pretty much need to own a car. So we need to think in a different way about our infrastructure and the long-term operating cost of that infrastructure and the adaptability of that infrastructure. We have a $2.6 billion gap just to maintain existing social housing units. We need to change the way we think about transportation planning if we're going to create sustainable cities. It'll be thinking about how we use low impact infrastructure that's good for our health and good for our communities and good for our economy. We should almost have a lens that we should put all in through infrastructure projects through to evaluate the implications of climate change on those infrastructure projects. This is Sherburne Common on our waterfront in Toronto. This is hard working infrastructure because it's public art that's also a filtration plant. Infrastructure can't do just one thing. It needs to do a whole variety of things and meet a whole variety of those shared interests. The shared interests that we need to coalesce around in order to plan in a fundamentally different way. The extent to which we do that will determine the change that we see. There's a great risk if we don't plan our city for all. And the image that you see on the screen here is, a, is Regent Park. It is so profound because it's using a market-based model of redevelopment to redevelop community housing to ensure that there is housing, good housing, for all. And it's been complicated. It's complex, but it leads to a better outcome. It's much easier to build a road than it is to build a complete street. So how we plan? The West Onlands, as some of you may be aware, is our nearly complete athlete's village for the Pan Am Games. It is 80 acres, right in the heart of the city, brownfield site, it's within walking distance of the downtown core, and we're building out a whole new neighborhood and a whole new community. These are actually private condos, but they're going to be used as the athlete's village, and then they will be sold to the buyers. What you see in the foreground here is Corktown Common. It's a 25-acre park that, in fact, is a $30 million uh, flood protection plane that, that unlocks over 500 acres of land in the downtown core for redevelopment. The last idea that I'm going to mention is how we adapt. The Brickworks was in fact through the vision of Evergreen Canada. The old buildings were adapted and no one could have anticipated the extent to which these old buildings would become one of the hottest event venues in the city. We created a place for people, a place for people to thrive. And after all, isn't that really what our cities are for?